So I want you to start to notice when you are subtly avoiding a truth. And then this is done through introspection. See my episode called Developing Introspection. So you develop a certain mindfulness and in inner attunement towards when you are avoiding a truth and you can actually feel it. I'll give you a whole list of examples and things will start to click right now. It's a little abstract. Um, but anyways, you feel when you're avoiding a truth and then you your, your mind and your body naturally wants to recoil away from the truth and turn towards a different direction to distract yourself or to think about something else. And what you do is you say, ah, that's the trick. And then you're going to make the counterintuitive move to face the truth head on and to face that, that sting of the truth. And that's the process you're going to be doing essentially here uh, over and over and over again for the rest of your life. And this is what I suggest will create the good life for you. Now, again, by truth, I'm not just talking about the absolute domain like God. I'm talking about many relative domains. So, for example, I'm talking about business, career, and life purpose. How much truth alignment is there in your work, in your career, in the way you conduct business, in the pursuit of your life purpose? in the impact you have on humanity and others with your work. Other domains that are very important are relationships, family, and communication. The way that you communicate, the way that you relate to others, whether it's intimate relationships or just friendships or family, how much truth alignment is there? There. Uh, another domain is with your emotions and your motivations. How truthful are you about the emotions you're feeling and what is actually motivating you? We lie to ourselves so much about emotions, especially with, with painful, difficult, negative emotions. Uh, we don't want to deal with it. So what we do is we fool ourselves or we suppress these emotions and um, we really avoid the difficult emotions. Uh, for example, you might feel jealousy, but jealousy or envy is a very sneaky emotion. It doesn't broadcast itself to you when it arises within you as this is jealousy or this is uh, envy. Uh, a lot of times with the emotion of hurt, being hurt by somebody else or by a situation, this is also a sneaky emotion because you feel hurt, but you, you don't want to admit to yourself that you're actually hurt. So a lot of times what happens is that the hurt is masked over by anger. So instead what happens is that most people, they just get angry and then they lash out when something hurts them because really that veneer or that sort of armor of anger is actually preventing a, 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 a truthful recognition of a deeper vulnerability inside of you in that you were actually hurt by this person or by this situation. You see, and so by being more truthful, you can you can cut through some of that armor and some of those sort of like defense mechanisms that you have. Also, a lot of your motivations, you're not truthful about what really motivates you to do what you're doing. And clearing up your motivations such that they are true and in alignment with truth, that's a big, that's a big improvement you can make to the quality of your life. Because if if you're living based on untruthful motivations. Uh, you're not clear about what your motivations are or you're fooling yourself, you're deceiving yourself about why you do what you do, that's going to screw you up in a lot of you know, big ways and also subtle ways. Uh, another do relative domain where this comes up is with your rationalizations, your opinions, your worldview, basically your epistemology, your political positions. Very few people are truthful about their worldview, where it came from, why they're defending it, the evidence and proof that they bring forth to support their political positions or their worldview or their beliefs about God or science or atheism or whatever. Um, so people in general are very untruthful in how they rationalize their own perspective and worldview. And then the way that they elevate and put on a pedestal their own worldview relative to the other worldviews that exist out there that are possible, right? You have a natural bias 
in favor of your own opinions over the opinions of others. And over time, this snowballs and this turns into a, into a very deep epistemic problem uh, such that your worldview becomes so self-biased and selfish and, and, and closed that you're not able to open your mind to higher truths and to higher dimensions and to, to higher possibilities. It closes you off from genuine spiritual pursuits and um, other deep topics, for example, that I talk about with actualize.org. Most people, if you know, if they just come in cold to one of my advanced videos and they just listen to it for five, 10 minutes, the things they're gonna hear me say are gonna trigger or offend them so much because they're gonna just butt up against their own personal opinions, beliefs, their paradigms, their rationalizations and worldviews and their you know, political positions and all that, their sort of naive epistemology, it's gonna, it's gonna um, be in such conflict that they're gonna turn off the video and they're gonna leave. And then they're not gonna get the possibility of all the growth and you know, insight that they could get, for example, from these videos and this content.